We are built for this network, network for the strong, not the weak. Yo, this is Big Illinois 73. I want you to tune in to the Backyard Podcast Music Sessions Friday nights, 10 p.m. Central Time on the Bill for This Network on the Spreaker.com. Check us out. Hit the like button, subscribe. Peace. The greatest from South Central. Tune in on Sunday for Sunday Night Love Jones, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and on Mondays for Monday Night Love Jones, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for good music, good conversation, and good vibes. It's all about the love. Yeah, man. talk about the most underrated players of NBA history, there are plenty of names to consider, but one that certainly doesn't get enough attention is Kevin Maurice Johnson. He played 12 seasons in the NBA, mostly as a member of the Phoenix Suns, and in that time, he left an impact on that fan base that lasts to this very day. But as for the NBA community as a whole, many have already forgotten just how talented this guy was. So to gain a proper appreciation for his legacy, we'll start as we always do by taking it back to the beginning of his career. Kevin Johnson was drafted with the 7th overall pick in the 1987 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers. The 6-1 guard was acquired by the Cavs with the intent of competing with a young Mark Price for the starting point guard spot. After 52 games in his rookie season, Johnson had lost the battle of the starting position to Price, which resulted in the Cavs trading Johnson to the Phoenix Suns where his minutes would dramatically increase. As a 22-year-old in his sophomore season, which was his first full season with the Suns, he put up remarkable numbers of 20.4 points, 12.2 assists, 4.2 rebounds, and 1.7 steals on 50.5% shooting, which was good enough for him to be awarded the league's most improved player award. As one of the team leaders, this amazing year-long performance propelled the Suns to a 55-27 record and into the Western Conference Finals where they were eventually eliminated by the Los Angeles Lakers. That was far from Kevin's fault though, as he put up over 23 points and 12 assists in the playoffs as well. In this year, which again was only his second season, he became one of only three players in NBA history to have averaged over 20 points and over 12 assists in the same season. And the two others are arguably the two greatest point guards of all time, Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas. Kevin's incredible breakout into the NBA was powered by his many talents. He was a slasher who was fantastic at finishing around the rim and capable of consistently finishing over defenders a foot taller than him. He was a great ball handler, but he was also an elite passer whose all-time great vision and facilitating have been somewhat lost and forgotten among the NBA community over time. Kevin is one of those rare stars whose prime actually occurred in his early 20s. From 1989 to 1992, Johnson was one of the best point guards in the entire league, averaging 21.2 points, 11.1 assists, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.6 steals on 50% shooting. 
Compare that four year stretch to a four season stretch of Magic Johnson's career in which he won two championships, and we begin to gain a perspective on just how impressive Kevin was during that time in his career. In three of those seasons, Kevin consecutively averaged at least 20 points and 10 assists. He's one of only four players in NBA history to average at least 20 points and 10 assists for three straight seasons. Russell Westbrook, Isaiah Thomas, and Oscar Robertson are the only other three players who accomplished the feat. He was consistently leading the Suns to over 50 win seasons, but they were repeatedly coming up short in the second round or conference finals. That was until the summer of 1992 when they acquired Charles Barkley in a trade from the Philadelphia 76ers. The combination of Barkley, Johnson, and Dan Marley dominated the Western Conference. With that being said, in October, early into the season, Johnson suffered a sports hernia in what would be an ongoing issue later into his career. Regardless, he helped lead the team for most of the regular season on their way to a 62-20 record, which was the best record in the NBA, and a trip to the NBA Finals where they would face Jordan, Pippen, and the Chicago Bulls. They pushed Chicago to six games with all of their stars playing up to their usual standards. But Jordan and the Bulls were ultimately too much, adding Kevin Johnson to the long list of players who would have been an NBA champion if Jordan hadn't gotten the way. Heading into the next season, Johnson proved once again that as good as he is in the regular season, he's usually even better in the playoffs. After winning 56 games in the regular season, Johnson raised his game in the playoffs, averaging 26.6 points, 9.6 assists, and 3.5 rebounds on 45.8% shooting. The very next year, in the 1995 playoffs, Johnson averaged 24, 9, and 4 on an incredible 57.3% shooting, which included epic performances against the eventual champion Houston Rockets. In Game 4, he dropped 43 points, 9 assists, 6 rebounds, and 3 steals on 18 of 24 shooting. And in the deciding 7th game, he added 46 points and 10 assists, which ultimately was just one basket short of defeating Hakeem and the Rockets. People correctly remember that Charles Barkley was the best player on the Suns during the majority of his career there. But many have forgotten or just never realized that there were some instances like this series against the Rockets where Kevin legitimately looked like the best player on the court. Unfortunately, Johnson's hernias and general injuries were beginning to catch up with him as he missed a total of 109 regular season games during his four seasons with Charles Barkley as a teammate. At the end of the 1998 season, Kevin's health had declined to such a point where he was ready to retire at the young age of 32. Kevin didn't have a very long career by great point guard standards, and this is a major reason why you don't see him ranked very high on the all-time lists. Looking back at the totality of his career, he averaged 17.9 points, 9.1 assists, 3.3 rebounds, and 1.5 steals on 49.3% shooting, which is tremendously accurate by point guard standards. He was a three-time All-Star, made five All-NBA teams, and other than his rookie season, Johnson made the playoffs in every single year of his career. Let me know in the comments section if you think Kevin Johnson is the most underrated point guard in NBA history, and if not, who's more underrated than him? Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Welcome aboard, welcome aboard, welcome aboard. It's your man H. Rap B. Coming at you live and direct. It's another week. It's another bunch of stories to be told. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. Again, as I say every week, this is a podcast. A podcast means this is on demand inter entertainment. And if it's on demand entertainment, that means you cannot miss the show. You, it is available to you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending upon what time you're listening. And if you if you are not listening live, you can catch it on Spreaker, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Castbox, Castbox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, 
or wherever you choose to download your podcast and listen. Thank you again for tuning in. And as you know, I acknowledge my ancestors and my family before each show. The, the, the names below are my ancestors as well as living family who support me. The names are Whitmore, Pollard, Turner, Battle, Cotton, Harper, Bailey, Chris, Lansdowne, Liggins, Duncans, Williams, and me, my mother, my father, my brothers, and my sisters. We are the Williams clan. We are in the building. As usual, uh, I am here with my man, Joe from Houston. What's good, Joe? What's going on with your brother? Chilling, man. Hey, another week. Uh, great sport. Ready to talk about it. Feeling good. All right, all right. I'd like to thank everybody who's listening. If you are listening live or no matter uh, how, please... Hit the uh, uh, like button and share via social media if possible. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, yeah, man, it was an interesting week. Um, it was uh, one story that before I even get into the whole minutia of sports, it was one story that stuck out. It was an incident in Los Angeles in which um, some Laker fans were celebrating, of course, you know. Shout out to the Los Angeles Lakers for winning their 17th World Championship, tying them with the Boston Celtics. And um, it's a group of fans celebrating, and you just saw video of them beating the hell out of a of what looked to be innocent stranger. The reason they attacked this young man is because he was brazen enough to walk through a group of Laker fans and yell, fuck Kobe. Which was just stupid. I mean, you got this fan base ignited by a championship. This is one of their greatest heroes, and you choose to insult this group of people's heroes, which makes zero sense. None whatsoever. It's just, I don't understand why people do stupid shit like that. And then there's, uh, uh, you know, the news get a hold to it. You know, and, you know, they turn it into something else. But, hey, I, I, I don't condone beating the hell out of anybody, man. But if you want to play those kinds of games, those are the prizes you get, man. I mean, I, I just don't understand that stupid shit. It's just, you know. That's exactly what it is. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And, like you said, that was sacrilegious in the fact of you being in L.A., and you're going to say, well, Kobe, knowing what the, pretty much the basketball world has, has, has been through with Kobe Bryant some time ago. And by you being in L.A., yeah, it's, <laughs> you might as well have went to NLACP and called everybody a bunch of letters, and, you, and you know, stuff like that. It's, it's sacrilegious. But I definitely... Yeah, I don't understand the concept or the line of thinking behind just being that disrespectful. Why is it that in this universe, or at this time in the universe, I should say, uh, we feel that that's that's necessary to say, you know. Oh man, fuck Kobe. You know, even if Kobe Bryant was still alive, I need somebody to help me understand the hate that goes into being a sports fan, man. That that I don't, I just don't get. It. Like I posted a, uh, I posted a story about Isaiah Thomas today. And he kind of clapped back at Michael Jordan. Uh, you know, Michael Jordan said he hated him. So he made a statement that was 1,000% factual. And you got people who, it is a 99.999% chance that they will ever walk past Michael Jordan as a human being. And I see shit 
These grown men, I'm going to read some of the comments. And it was kind of embarrassing. I knew it would be met with some uh, am, 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 uh, uh, aminous, am, you know, upset people. Animosity? Yeah. And, you know, it was... That's a This motherfucker, like... Some people were honest, then you had to...